Now we have the inverse tangent of x. So first, if we look at y equals the tangent of x, it looks like sort of like that. It has an asymptote at 2 pi over 2, and, or negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So if we invert that across the y equals x line, we get something that looks much like that and that. So here it's got a horizontal asymptote at negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So the domain of y equals tangent x is in between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Negative pi over 2 is less than x is less than pi over 2. And specifically, it's strictly less than it's because it never quite gets there. It's an asymptote. That was the domain. The range is all real numbers, so from negative infinity to positive infinity. Then when we look at the inverse tangent, it has a range, or I'm sorry, it has a domain of negative infinity to positive infinity, but it's got a limited range from, uh, what am I doing, from negative pi over 2 is less than y is less than pi over 2. Great. Those are our tangent and inverse tangents. Now let's talk derivative. y equals the inverse tangent of x. I'm going to take the tangent of both sides. Tangent of the inverse tangent of x. So that means that the tangent of y equals the tangent and the inverse tangent cancel themselves out. You get x. Scoot. All right, now I'm going to take the derivative in terms of x of both sides. So of the tangent of y and of x. All right, the derivative of the tangent is the secant squared, had to remember for a minute, and then the derivative of the inside is y prime. The derivative of x is just 1. Divide both sides by secant squared y, and we get that y prime is equal to, well, 1 over the secant is the cosecant, so this is cosecant squared. Oh my gosh, I did not just say that. 1 over the secant is the cosine. So this is the cosine squared of y. Forgive my insanity. Right. I need to talk about the cosine of y, but I don't know that. What I do know is the tangent of y. So it is time for some... Oh, and we're not going to worry. Secant is always... Secant is in between negative infinity, negative 1, positive infinity, positive 1. It never goes near 0. And then secant squared, extra, never goes near 0. So cosine, no worries. Yeah. Domain, or, yeah, this being 0 is not a worry. Okay, so katoa. So, ka, to, a, so katoa. And again, Sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent equals opposite over adjacent. And I don't know what the cosecant square is, but I do know that the tangent of y is x. So on my beautiful right triangle, oh dear, one leg's a little long, on my slightly other than beautiful right triangle. I know that the tangent of y is x. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So if this is y, this is the opposite, and this is the adjacent. So if that has to equal x, I can make this x and this one. And it might be some ratio of those, like 2x over 2, x over 2 over 1 half, but somehow opposite over adjacent equals 1. Then I have to find this side. 
Okay, Pythagoras to the rescue! x squared plus 1 squared equals question mark squared. Um, let's see, so I take the square root of both sides. And 1 squared is just 1. So question mark equals, uh, let's see, plus or minus the square root of x squared plus 1. So the cosine of y would be, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent is 1. Hypotenuse, we just said, is plus or minus the square root of x squared plus 1. Okay, good enough. But then we don't actually want the cosine. We want the cosine squared. So we've got 1 over plus or minus the square root of x squared plus 1 squared. Now, it doesn't matter whether this used to be plus or minus. When you square it, what you get out is positive. So the square of 1 is 1 over square root squared goes away, and we have x squared plus 1. So the derivative of our function, the inverse tangent of x is 1 over x squared plus 1.